Hello, this is Mike, and this is PHP Programming Lesson 31, and we're going to continue the discussion from Lesson 30 and finish building our randomized password creator in Flash Builder and PHP. So let's go to the next portion of the discussion, is that Flash does not, is that Flash Builder does not talk to a database. It needs to talk to an array, and that array of choice is the array collection. So now let's go to our completed code and complete this discussion. So what we need is an array collection in a sense to grab the data that's coming back from the call responder. So now let's complete the rest of the discussion. I need to have an array collection to grab the data that's coming back. So I'm going to uncomment this code right here, and this is the array collection class. And here's some more code that I'm, uncom that I'm going to uncomment, and that is the array collection itself. Now the array collection class is declared almost like a class in PHP. See the new array collection? I'm declaring it. I need to give it a name, but I also need to once again some for some reason in Flash Builder I need to once again tell you that that array collection is strict typed as array collection. Now strict typing is not something you see a lot in PHP. PHP tries to strict type automatically by, by, but by putting that colon and the name array collection again I'm actually strict typing it and then I'm actually opening it up, instantiating it just as I did in PHP. I want to call it a variable and want to give the name private, going to scope it, but here's a new variable and that's bindable. What bindable is actually going to do is it's going to let me, in a sense, update this array collection whenever it changes. So it's almost like it's looking through the program over and over again, and whenever that uh, particular variable changes, it puts the new value in there. So we're almost ready. So we have our button. And so when our button is clicked, it runs the creation uh, method here and generates the password. Then in our call responder, you have the... Uh, then in our call respond, you have the results that actually runs the result handler. And what the result handler does now, it actually runs this piece of code where it takes the uh, my array collection, takes a generate dot password result, grabs the last result as an array collection. So what it's essentially doing is sticking everything that's coming from the server into the my array collection variable that I just created. Isn't that pretty cool? So just to go through the process one more time. You click the button, get data, for example, or get password. That collection handler uh, makes a request to the server and generates the password. Those passwords come back from the server in the uh, call responder. The call responder runs the generate user password, and that is stuck into the array collection. So now that it's stuck into the array collection, you actually want to put that into the text box and that is extremely simple you use your curly brackets All right. so your two text boxes are right here now how do I know that well if I go back to design view and I click on them you can see what's highlighted is the text box itself so the array collection is an array and it's the same array that comes back from the server so what was the array that came back from the server let's remind ourselves the first one was a username and the second one was the password. So I have to basically put a zero in for the first one which would be username and a one in for the second one which would be password. And I'm using that, what I've said many times, that curly bracket convention. So what the curly brackets does in Flash Builder, which is a little different than PHP, is it actually works with the binary expression. So whenever there is a request made and that variable changes, it is updated in the text box. Now we're actually going to run the code and let you see that. So we're running the code, we hit the get data, we send a request to the server, the server sends back the uh, username and password. This is collection 1, this is collection 0, and this is collection 1. Let's run it again, so each time we hit that, a new username and password comes back, uh, basically going back to the server, sending it through the array, back to the array collection. Now I know this was kind of fast, but don't worry, we'll be doing this over and over again as we handle more and more advanced applications. And I'll make sure that I'll go over the, the individual points as we continue to move on. Hey, we've got a lot of cool stuff we're going to do here. I mean, there's a whole business here. There's the ability to build a fantastic applications very rapidly that handle data in a way that Flash hasn't been able to do it before, but can now. Let's review what we've learned today. Today we covered the process of actually getting data from the server into Flash Builder. So basically what you do is you click a button which sends a request to the server and the server sends back data to Flash Builder through the call responder. That information was grabbed and thrown into an array collection which was sent to the screen. The majority of this code was auto-generated. We also learned there was two types of scripting in Flash Builder. There was action script which basically dealt with uh, calculations and moving data around 
and there was MXML, and now called the New Spark Architecture, which dealt with the actual screen components. And so as we move on, we'll become more familiar with how all this works. This is kind of an introduction, but for your assignment, I would actually like you to go through this again, see if you can generate yourselves, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively.